Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the T-Bow T-Book R8. This is a 15.6 inch full 1080p display laptop that retails for under 170 bucks on Gearbest. For the price, you're getting a very affordable full-size laptop that also comes with an Intel Cherry Trill X5 series quad-core processor and 4 gigs of built-in DDR3 RAM. It features 64 gigs of built-in eMMC storage, which is expandable via a micro SD card on the side up to 128 gigabytes. The most interesting thing about the R8 is definitely the size, because at 170 bucks or even 200 bucks, what we commonly see is 13 inch or 11 inch ultrabooks, but to have a full 15.6 inch uh, device uh, means that it's going to benefit folks who want to watch a lot of streaming media such as YouTube, Netflix, or maybe even some productivity like Excel or PowerPoint documents. A larger screen is going to be more comfortable. On the other side, it does mean it's slightly heavier and harder to carry around everywhere, but it still remains, you can see, impressively slim. Because it does use the extremely energy efficient Intel Cherry Trail, which is basically the Atom processor, it is a fanless computer as well, just like most Chromebooks. In fact, I think that the Chromebook, uh, Chromebooks that you can find at this price would, it, would be its biggest competitor. However, remember that the T-Bow R8 runs on a full version of Windows 10, which means it has an edge if you're looking for productivity and installing legacy apps for, again, a bit more of work. Uh, whereas Chromebook is more suited for entertainment for only browsing the web. So this does have a few more features up its sleeves. Let's take a quick look at the design first. You can see that uh, overall the laptop is constructed out of plastic, which isn't a huge surprise considering its low price. However, it does feel very well constructed. Uh, despite the fact that it is made out of plastic, there is very to little to no flex at all whenever you're trying to bend it or uh, try to push it down at the edges or seams. It feels incredibly sturdy. It also has a one piece hinge kind of in the same style as something like the MacBook uh, that distributes the weight of the display quite well. It does have a matte finish, which means it doesn't glare or attract fingerprints either, which is a plus in my opinion. It has this cobalt blue look, which I think is also pretty classy. On the side, you have access to a proprietary charging port along with a full USB 3.0 port, a micro HDMI port, and on the other side, there is the second USB 2.0 port, 3.5 millimeter headphone port, and the micro SD card slot. Now, I do wish that the headphone port would be a little closer to the edge just because it's easier to plug in a pair of headphones that way um, if you're sitting down and watching media, but it's not a huge problem. And again, because this has a tapered design, the edges here doesn't have too much space to put in additional ports or accessories. So overall, again, you have two full-size USB 2.0 ports, which uh, should be enough. You can always plug in your own kind of USB hub if you want to connect more accessories. The back is completely clean, except for two stereo speakers, which uh, gets reasonably loud, but it is a little tinny sounding. So for the best experience, I would still recommend plugging your own headphones or using Bluetooth to connect to a wireless pair of uh, speakers or headphones. The rubber feet do a good job of elevating the laptop and preventing it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. What's also impressive about the R8 is it's almost possible to lift up the entire lid without having to press down on the bottom compartment. This is uh, you know, more common in expensive laptops such as the MacBook Pro, which has a really strong and well-designed hinge. Usually, usually in low-cost laptops and in plastic laptops, you have to really press down to open up the lid. But again, this one just feels pretty premium whenever you're using it and opening it up. So opening up, we do have again that 15.6 inch display which is also matte, just like the plastic used on the front. And that means even when there's light or if you're going outdoors, you can still see it, which is pretty good. Brightness is also decent. It doesn't get radically bright, but at the same time, it's definitely good enough for reading even when there's background lighting. Um, otherwise, you can see that the bezels on the computer are also reasonably uh, slim, especially on the left-hand side. For some reason, the right bezel is slightly thicker, which is not a huge problem, but just something to quickly point out. There's also a webcam on the very top here. Now, you can see that this isn't an IPS panel, uh, so that when you're tilting the screen, it does tend to wash out a little bit more in terms of colors, which is expected again, and pretty similar to other panels we've seen on Toshiba and Dell laptops and HP laptops at this price. But again, it does pack a full 1080p resolution and uh, overall it is, it is very pixel dense. So you do get a nice HD experience when watching media. 
On the bottom here, we have access to the uh, trackpad in addition to the keyboard. What we can see is that there isn't a dedicated numpad, which means if you are heavily reliant on uh, numeric text entry, maybe you're doing some statistical data entry, it's not going to be the best experience in the world. But there is a kind of a numpad dedicated, uh, integrated into the center here. You can see the icon 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and you can hold down the function key to access those. But it does mean that we have a larger area dedicated just for the traditional QWERTY layout. And as a result, the keyboard here feels very comfortable. Again, this is a full-size laptop, so one of the benefits is going to be that keyboard. It's a very nice springy and responsive experience with a nice amount of travel, large keys, and overall it's one of the better keyboards we've seen at this price point. So if you're consistently typing out essays and longer emails, you should be really pleased with the keyboard on here, despite the fact it's not backlit. There are two microphones on the top here, which means that there is noise cancellation, another pretty unique feature. And that means if you're doing Skype or video chatting, it can cancel out echoes pretty well. The side here also features a few LED lights that gives you the status of the power, uh, caps lock, as well as the shift keys. Now, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the placement of the power key on the very side. Um, I wish that it was more distinguished from the rest of the keyboard and a little harder to accidentally trigger since it has the same key travel and size as the other keys in the top here. Maybe if it was placed on the top of the laptop or somewhere else, it would have been slightly better. Um, but overall, uh, it is what it is. There's dedicated arrow keys. The trackpad itself is nice and oversized in the same style as a MacBook. And even though it's made out of plastic, I felt that it was very responsive. In fact, in fact, it was a bit almost too responsive. Sometimes if you're scrolling through web pages, it would go too fast for uh, you know my liking, but I got used to it after using it for a few more minutes. Um, it only clicks down on the bottom left and right corners as opposed to the entire thing at the center. So that's something to get used to as well. But overall, not a back tra bad trackpad experience at all, especially on this low priced laptop. All right, so let's jump into the kind of user experience. What we see here is a very typical kind of stock install of Windows 10 Home Edition, which is good. Uh, it's a fully licensed version as well, which has been activated. And when you first power it on, you have to go through the step setup process that takes about five to 10 minutes to create an account, to uh, log in with your Microsoft account, enter your Wi-Fi information, your PC password, stuff like that. It's full Windows 10, so you do have access to things like Cortana, which is the smart digital assistant that you can use with voice recognition so having really good microphones makes a lot of sense here and there's also things like windows hello for unlocking it by uh, you know facial recognition stuff like that that you can play around with um, and again it's a full windows experience which means you have access to you know the, the thousands of applications available on the internet you can download anything that you see um, you know from programs that were built even back in the Windows XP or 2000 days can be uh, accessed on here, uh, which is great. And uh, again, differentiating factor compared to something like Chromebook uh, or Chrome OS, which is very limited in terms of desktop based applications. You do also have access to the Microsoft Store that gives you a few more options for kind of modern uh, mobile-esque apps, which you may want to kind of play around with. And that includes a few games uh, and stuff like that. So you are getting, again, a very nice, complete uh, computer computing experience on here. Um, it's a very clean install with no bloatware or extras, so there isn't Microsoft Office that's pre-installed. If you want to access that, you have to download it yourself. Um, and out of the 64 gigs, about 52 gigs is remaining, um, and you know the, the rest is taken up by the operating system. So that's a, a brief kind of benchmark to keep in mind. Um, again, the screen at full 1080p is also quite uh, nice, especially for streaming full HD videos. If you kind of zoom all the way in, it's definitely difficult to differentiate between kind of pixels. Now, it's not a quad HB HD panel, so there are better displays, uh, arguably, but uh, at this price, it is already one of the better screens, especially by PPI standards. Uh, I can, you can tell that it also you know, has a pretty rich uh, overall color saturation if you're looking at it dead on and not from at an angle because again it, it isn't an IPS panel. 
Otherwise, if we take a quick look at uh, kind of the web browsing experience, I would still recommend downloading Google Chrome rather than using Edge because I find it to be a little faster and just a little easier to import my work and bookmarks from past computers. Um, and overall, the experience is good. Uh, keep in mind that, again, this is an Intel Atom processor at the end of the day, which uh, you know was originally designed more for kind of netbooks as well as lower end hardware. Through the years, Intel Atom has gotten consi considerably better Better. Before, in the early 2000s, it was a single core processor, but now, in the Cherry Trail days, it's a quad-core chipset, which again goes all the way up to 1.92 gigahertz on this machine. So it's not shabby at all. For things like streaming full HD video, there's little to no stuttering, and I'll do a demonstration of that uh, later on. But still, there's a difference between this and something like a Core M or a Core I series processor. And so notably, if you're browsing the web and you are looking at really complex sites like the New York times, you have to be a bit more patient and wait an extra, you know, one second to two seconds for everything to completely load. But once it is loaded, you do get a pretty nice complete experience. And you can see that the entire page will render without any checkerboard patterns. Uh, there will be kind of moments of jumpiness, but it's not too bad considering how complex the New York Times is. We have so many video elements and so many flash elements running at once, but it's handling the page pretty well, even though we have other bookmarks open on the very top here. So let's do uh, exit out of the New York Times and kind of go over to a YouTube video. I want to do a quick kind of a sample of uh, how it does in video playback. And we'll also get use this as an opportunity to check out the speakers on this uh, R8. So let's play back this. All right, so just pausing the music now. Uh, a few takeaways. First of all, you can see that uh, watching videos up to 1080p uh, has no problems at all. I can scrub between different parts of the video and it plays back almost instantly. You can see that it's already buffered ahead. So it's very quick as far as watching uh, full HD content, whether it's Netflix, YouTube, uh, or Hulu. Now, however, the built-in speakers, as you can hear, aren't you know, outstanding. They get pretty loud, but they are a little tinny and it's a little piercing at higher volumes and higher frequencies. Um, so again, the best audio experience will be found by plugging in your own headphones or using Bluetooth. Speaking of, if we talk about the reception quality on this device, again, we do have access to Bluetooth version 4.0. Uh, so we have the ability to connect any accessory like wireless keyboards, wireless speakers, things like that. And the Wi-Fi reception is also pretty strong. Um, you can see that I'm consistently getting three to max bars of a Wi-Fi signal, even though I'm on a different uh, room than where the router is located. So it's a dual band 2.4G and 5G wireless uh, chipset that does actually pretty good. Uh, I rarely got dropped signals, and so Wi-Fi antennas are pretty strong on the R8, which is definitely a plus. When it comes to the battery performance, um, it's not outstanding, but it is pretty good, I would say. Again, 15.6 inch against a full-size laptop, so you're already going to get slightly inferior battery life to a uh, you know, 13 inch Ultrabook, just because with a smaller screen, there are less pixels to push around. Um, but with something like this, I got roughly five hours to six hours, depending on what tasks I was performing, with Wi Fi turned on and about 50% brightness on the display. So, six hours max, um, you know, is pretty average, I would say, for a uh, Ultrabook. But again, you have to keep in mind this is a larger machine and not something smaller that has a smaller display. With that being said, it does have you know, a cherry trail processor. So in some ways I did wish the battery could last maybe an hour or half an hour longer uh, in some of my testing. But nonetheless, it works pretty well. And if you're using it just to watch movies, you can already get, you know, four movies in there. So if you're on a flight, you should be satisfied uh, before the battery drains. 
Um, otherwise, we can see that general UI navigation is again pretty smooth and snappy. If I want to, I can enter the tablet mode. Um, and from here, we can see that the touchpad really is quite sensitive in terms of swiping left and right uh, between the different panels and screens. Tablet mode basically just uh, turns on all the tiles and kind of returns into this Metro UI inspired Windows 8 setup. It doesn't make quite as much sense on this since this doesn't have a touch screen display, but it is a feature that you can navigate and use if you wanted to. And I can swipe down using three fingers or two fingers from the top when I'm in an app. So for instance here, to go back into the main desktop, I can swipe again to kind of go back. So you do have all the gestures available to play around with, and it is pretty sensitive on this trackpad. When it comes to charging, again, you do have a proprietary charger, which is very compact. I really like how this is such a small size. I do wish it's using USB Type-C though, as opposed to proprietary. However, it charges up in around um, 3.5 hours to four hours. It's not completely fast, but it's also not really slow, so it's average. Uh, but the best thing about it really is its size. The worst thing is that it's proprietary and not using a standard charger. But you can see here that general navigation for web browsing, as long as you have uh, maybe seven or eight tabs open, I would say remains quite swift and responsive, especially since there are four gigs of built-in RAM, so there's enough RAM to switch back and forth between tabs without too much significant delay. Um, Otherwise, that's pretty much it. As far as the uh, other apps and programs that you would want to run on this machine, I certainly would not run, you know, Photoshop on it. That would take, uh, you know, too long to completely load. But for things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, for navigating between different uh, documents, for uh, just uh, basic file management, it does a great job with. Um, and again, if you for some light productivity, you shouldn't have too many problems either. Uh, inserting a micro SD card, there were no real compatibility issues, and it can be beneficial if you have lots of offline media that you want to store and then maybe view it back on this HD display, or maybe again for file management or for editing in Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. Um, something else I want to quickly point out is as far as heat distribution is concerned, the laptop does get slightly warm on uh, what I suppose is kind of the left hand edge. Um, so significantly on this little corner here is where the heat seems to build up the most. Everywhere else remains really cool in temperature. Again, this is a fanless computer. So the benefit is it's very silent. Uh, there's no noise. So it's comfortable even you know when using it for hours and hours or perhaps in a public environment. Uh, the downside is again, it does get a little bit warm on this corner so if it's sitting on your lap uh, and maybe it's better to rest it on something else uh, instead to help it ventilate a little bit but overall it's very compact and you can see it's quite slim it is again made out of plastic so maybe some of the corners um, as far as the paint is concerned can get potentially scratched a little bit more easily than something like aluminum but uh, overall I think it's pretty well constructed so that's pretty much it as far as the T-Bow T-Buck R8 is concerned um, I would say that performance is pretty good it's comparable to other mini PCs and all the other Windows uh, laptops and two-in-one convertibles we've seen that runs on quite similar configurations of the uh, X5 series quad-core processor, four gigs of RAM. There are real no, there are no big surprises here as far as performance. Uh, the takeaway is for web browsing, for media streaming, for light productivity, it does a great job. And that's really what most people will need at the end of the day. But if you are looking for something that's going to be a powerhouse for gaming, for extensive multitasking for things like Photoshop editing, then it's not going to be quite as convenient. The best thing about the R8 is going to be that full-size screen for those who want it because it offers a different option from all of the existing Ultrabooks in the same price range that we've seen in the past, which again tends to be 13 inches. This might be a good option again maybe to replace a slightly larger laptop that you have at home uh, as opposed to something that you want to take everywhere with you, even though it already is quite small and slim. Um, and at this price point, I think it's a pretty good value, especially with that full 1080p display. So you can check out more details about the R8 in our official written review. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the T-Bow T-Book R8 Windows 10 laptop.